Why aren't you getting a call back from your engineering interview? I just interviewed a guy to join my team and it went very, very well. And it made me think about all the other people that I had interviewed before, either on a call or in person. And it made me think about why I did not call them. I just wanna share some thoughts with you. So typically, if an engineering manager does not call you back, it's because of one of three things. And we'll go over them now. And the first one, of course, being money. Money is the first barrier that you have to cross. If you've told a recruiter or the engineering manager your rate and what you're looking for, and if that does not align with them, well then guess what? You're most likely not gonna get a call back. Unless something happened in the interview that made this manager think that you were exceptional or could fit in a different role. So do be careful how you state your your going rate or what your expectations are, because if they don't align, then right, you're definitely not just gonna get a call back. Pay attention to some remarks that you also make that might be unrealistic, saying, oh, well, you know, I, I wanna get paid this and this much in the next two or three years. Okay, you don't really know how this company works or what their ranges are, so I wouldn't really mention anything like that. What you could do, of course, is just give a range or say something that is very politically correct, such as, I want to get paid for my market value at this current time in my career. Right. And I, you know, and I'm sure that your company offers that something along those lines. The second reason why you probably didn't get a call back is because you had misaligned goals. What that means is that the interviewer, especially if it's an engineering role, the manager, they're trying to figure out, do your goals match with my goals? So me as an engineering manager and a hiring manager, I'm always looking out truly for it's a selfish transaction. It's a bit of a case where I'm looking out for myself and my team, because at this point in time, I don't really know you. I don't know your work ethic. I don't know how you are with others. So I'm trying to enter this partnership with you, but I'm being very, very cautious who I let into my circle, if you will. Well, that's one thing. But if you tell me in the interview, uh, if I ask you a question such as where do you see yourself in five years and you tell me, well, really, you know, I want to be progressing and get into management as early as I can, or I want to be doing something technical, you know, maybe you're doing some sort of studies or anything else that uh, relates to my field, but don't necessarily relate to this position. Well, then I'm going to use that. I'm going to read that as or flag because you're not aligning with what I'm trying to accomplish. The big question that I'm trying to ask myself is how can you help me out, right? The transaction here, of course, is money and time. But at the end of the day, that is the answer that I'm trying to get to. How can you help me out? And if we're not aligned with our goals, it's not going to work. Things that you might say in the interview, such as, oh, I like to uh, use my hands and be in the field and, and work outside. That's really nice. And I'll commend you for that. But for instance, uh, for a role that I have, maybe that's an indoor office role that uses computer aided software. Software. So things like that might disqualify you, right? Where your goals don't align with mine and what you like to do does not align with me. Which brings me to the third and final one, and that is really just company fit and do you pass the vibe check. So there's there's some intuition involved here, right? And I could probably say that uh, women are better at this sort of intuition than than men are just because they, uh, they're they women <laughs> and they have to deal with this all the time. But the check, the vibe check, the, do you pass the sniff test? Are you going to be just joining my team and my company just to leave after a year? I don't want that. That takes a lot of my time to not only train you, there's opportunity costs involved where I could have had somebody else in this role. It costs a lot of time and money to get somebody up to speed. And typically for any engineering role, whether that's in any industry, electrical to computer uh, science to a civil, mechanical, whatever it is, there's a learning curve to all of this. And by the time you figure out what it is that my company is looking for and the other potential clients that I'm working with, what they want, that takes some time. So that's a big thing. Are you going to leave? If I or any of the other managers that are on the call or an in-person interview are there, and if we start to sniff something out to where this is more of a stepping stone and you're not viewing this as a career or a place that you might be here for some time, well, yeah, we're going to we're gonna nix that. And one big tell right away is your resume. If you're just starting out and you have no experience, that's one thing. But let's say you've been working for four to five years, but you've hopped around, let's say, two or three times. That's a red flag, right? Because now I'm thinking, well, this person, in fact, I'm, I probably won't even interview you. You won't even get to that point. But I'm always thinking, is this person going to leave me because you've shown in your history that you leave companies? Finally, it's also about just a company fit. Are you going to fit in well with my team? Do I like your personality? All of those things. You might have a great personality, but it just doesn't fit well with the people that I foresee you working with because everything is, is team oriented, right? And it also really depends on the role too. Am I looking for somebody to be a strong leader or a star player? Or am I looking for somebody to just fit in really nicely into a role who could potentially build into a star player? And that's information that 
that when you're interviewing, you don't really know about. If you ever had a nice interview and you thought it went well, but you didn't get a call back, you know, don't beat yourself up. That can happen. Oftentimes, it just might be that one of these things and not align because really what I'm looking for when I hire somebody on is do they fit all of my criteria, right? It also depends. If this is a crucial role that I need filled immediately, well, then my criteria slips, right? If I'm desperate, my criteria slips. But if I have time and I'm really looking for the right person, well, then everything goes up a little bit. So never beat yourself up. If you feel that you had a great call, the best thing to do is potentially reach out to the recruiter if it was through recruiting or to the company itself and the hiring manager and just thank them for their time and just ask for feedback. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you so much for your time. What can I do better? Or can you please tell me something uh, that I might have said or something that threw you off as to why I'm not getting a call back? You can ask those questions if you get on the phone. So never beat yourself up though, because oftentimes it's just probably, it's not you. It's just what the hiring manager is needing at this time. Hope this helps. If it did, like leave me a comment below and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.